Hey guys, we want to welcome you to day five of our discipleship series. Um, it's Sunday afternoon. I hope you were able to uh, enjoy the Sunday morning service. If uh, not, please go back, watch that. It's an encouraging message. I think that it's important for all of us to know and hear at this time. Um, but today we're getting back together for this discipleship series. And uh, we've been going through the discipleship wheel. This is for all of us who have come to Christ. We've surrendered our life in a moment to Him in salvation. But then that moment of surrender leads to a process, a whole life of surrendering to Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Jesus gets put on the inside of our life. His Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us. But the key is, is that we want to make sure that His Spirit works its way out to the outside so that our life produces a... Christian life lived in action uh, in the world so that people see what Christ is like. We've talked to you over these last couple of days that the way we get there is by putting our, ourself into training or practice. And the way we practice or train ourselves is through spiritual disciplines. These spiritual disciplines show up on the wheel as spokes in the wheel. We've talked about the vertical spokes, the, the, the Word of God we spoke about how we need to get the Word from the pages of Scripture into our heart. And the way we do that is on one hand, we make sure and we remember that we hear the Word, we read the Word, we study the Word, we memorize the Word, and we meditate on the Word. That is important to get the Word in our heart. The Word is what kind of is our teacher in how to live the Christian life. But we also have to be in great fellowship with God. And that is done through prayer. We have this opportunity now to go directly to Him in prayer. So we should practice each and every day the opportunity we have to draw closer to God in relationship. And we get to Him in prayer by allowing ourselves to set apart a time in isolation where it's just us with God being able to have dialogue with God. We talk with Him. We allow Him to talk to our spirit. And we do that when we get together. We showed you on the other hand the five things that are very important. We want to make sure when we get together with God that we praise Him first and then we thank Him and then we intercede on behalf of others and then we petition or ask what we need for ourselves. And then the last thing is we always confess our sins before Him so that we continually cleanse our lives and allow Him to cleanse our lives so that it can be used for the great things that He wants to use it for. Um, now, today we go to those horizontal spokes. And the horizontal spoke here is has an F in there for fellowship. Not only should we have fellowship with God through Jesus, but we should have fellowship with others through Jesus also. And this is the area right now that in the church, in the middle of this virus time, in the middle of this coronavirus, when people have kind of been separated off and people have to stay uh, within groups of 10 or under, and we're trying to, to keep ourselves separate. This is the area of the church that's kind of suffering the most right now. And this is highly important to our relationship with God. We must have time spent with other believers together with them. Uh, this is how God designed it. The church in and of itself, just so you understand, the church is the people, it's, it's people who have been called out of sin to be members of a new family and citizens of a new kingdom. So we become the witnesses to the world about this new kingdom and this new king. We, we exist here to praise or glorify or bring honor to our king. That's why we want to live a Christian life. But we also are here to witness to the world about that king. And so the church, it's a, it's a Greek word called ekklesia. And the ekklesia, it shows up over 110 times in scripture. That it's the calling out of saints to God. It's the calling out of sinners from their sinfulness into a life where they are put inside a new family. And that family, are they're just the people who have been called out and they have received Christ. They've surrendered their life to Him and they've received the Holy Spirit. And so this, the Christian life, 
are these people who are living together in the Spirit of God. I, I love the way it's said here. Listen, it says, Together we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. A church then is this. A group of people committed to Jesus Christ who are bound together by the indwelling influence of the Holy Spirit. And we have this, and the reason we have this Holy Spirit and we're, we're all together in this is to glory to the glory of God and to all the nations, to witness to all the nations. And so it's very important when we look at it, what's a church then supposed to look like or be like? I feel like in Acts chapter 2, when the church first began, there's a beautiful picture of the church there in chapter 2, verse 42 through 47. And it says this, All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place, and they shared everything they had. They sold their properties and possessions. They shared the money with those in need. They worshipped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Okay? You have this great picture of all these people who have surrendered their life to Christ, they all have the Holy Spirit together, but then God is joining them together in bigger groups. It says they would join together uh, to worship together, to sing together, to praise, and in the synagogues they would meet together, but also in smaller groups in the houses. And so when we talk about fellowship... The thing that you have to get in your mind is this, the understanding that God is putting us together so that we can not only advance the kingdom, but it also helps us grow as Christians. And that happens in two ways. One, which I call big church, that is getting together on, on worship times, like on a Sunday morning gathering together with the whole family, and we gather together to praise His name, to hear the Word, to share prayers together, and to, uh, to hear testimony together, and to worship God. We're there to worship Him, okay? We also meet together, it says, they met in houses, from house to house. And they would enjoy meals together. And they would share prayer together. And they would get together in this way. They would share even their finances. They would give. They would tithe to the church. And then everybody got taken care of. Because it's one big family that they're all gathering together, not only to worship God, but to help each other grow and edify each other in Christ. And so what we need to think of is, are you using your opportunities well to grow in your relationship with Christ by being at big church each week the way you should, but also by getting together in some sort of small group, Bible study, Sunday school, uh, a house ministry. In some way, are you meeting together with a smaller group to fellowship with them, to grow with them so that you guys can have accountability and, and ask each other questions, do studies together, and uplift each other and push each other along in your faith. Help each other grow in your faith. Are you also gathering together with the whole group in opportunities just to praise Him, to hear His Word, to be moved by testimonies of others, and just to praise God in that time? You look in Scripture, and this is highly important that we understand this. Listen, in Hebrews chapter 10, it says, Let us, and this is chapter 10 of Hebrews, verse 24 and 25, Let us consider then one another, to provoke one another unto love and good works. See, we're supposed to work on each other to push each other to get better. Not forsaking the assembling together as some are in the habit of doing. Let us exhort one another, 
even more so as we see the day approaching. As we think the world is continuing to go further and further, and that's getting closer and closer to the day Jesus returns, we should be all the more, there should be an urgency to want to gather together with each other and to want to push each other along and help encourage each other to do better. I love there's a, a portion or a, a quote that I heard one time that they said, God has called us to build each other up, listen, through interdependency and loving one another in relationship. He also says, gather together as a body. Because when you do, God draws close around you. And as we praise Him, we also encourage one another to be more like Him. That's so important for us to learn and, and, and be a part of big church and small church. And so, as we think about it also, if we get together in big church to praise Him, and if we get together in small church to encourage or edify one another, the whole purpose of the church is found in that. And if you look at it as a cross, kind of as these spokes, there's this relationship with God that we're supposed to. We belong as a church together to love God, to love God, and to love others. And so we go to big church to show that we love God and we celebrate Him. We go to small church or small groups to get in contact with each other and love on each other. It's so important to have a small group that you're a part of that will look out for you and you look out for them and you help encourage each other along. And so, as it comes down to it, make sure that we understand fellowship is one of the most important parts of making sure that Christ gets from the inside to the outside. We have to have fellowship with each other in big church and small church if you expect to grow to the point where God can fully use you. There's a lot of people in the world who are those Lone Ranger Christians out there and they say, you know what, I don't have to go to church to be a Christian. Now, when we think that way, that's wrong. God's Word tells us not to forsake getting together. And we're there together to encourage one another along. And when we all gather together... God gathers with us and He inhabits the praise of His people. And so if I stay separate from everybody else and say that I'm part of the church, it's not the way God says it. Make sure that you're in the Word. Make sure that you're praying in isolation with God. But then make sure you get out of isolation and you make sure you get in fellowship with others. In big church and celebrate His name. Celebrate all that he does. Learn more about him. And listen to the testimony of others, what he's done in their life. But also, get together in small groups. And those small groups are meant to encourage one another and pour each other's life into each other. As iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. you got to get together if you want to encourage each other to be greater. Okay? And so, the church is made this way. Make sure we fellowship with each other. All right? We'll be back with you tomorrow. I'll be doing another installment in the uh, the superhero parables. Also, uh, David has started a, a message, an ongoing message of hope. And he did the first video on Friday. I hope you've seen that. If not, go back and watch it. He'll be dropping a new video tomorrow for that. Um, Tom Waybright is also going to be starting a video series on Monday that will be the uh, four-part series in the life of Ruth or the book of Ruth in the Bible. And so he's just going to take each of those four chapters in the book of Ruth and just share those with you. And so there's going to be plenty of opportunities. Even though we can't gather together right now, we're doing everything we can to gather with you and get people together in the Word. And so we look for that day when we can be back together with each other. But until then, we'll keep coming to you online, okay? Stay home, be safe, and we love you.